Hey there, Tad Hargrave from Marketing for Hippies. Today's video is about self-doubt. Just walking by the uh, little duck pond. It's starting to freeze over. And most of the geese, I just saw a little flock of them flying away, probably flying south, getting out of town. Uh, I can see some more on the, on the lake over there, but not able to get to the water. I'm sure they'll be gone soon. So, self-doubt. I had a message, uh, probably a comment on one of my videos. This was months and months ago. And I've been meaning to get to it ever since. She said, you know, Simon Sinek talks about people don't just buy what you do, they buy why you do it, which is true. And she said, you know, I'm very clear about my why, but, uh, you know, Tad, how did you get over your self-doubt? about actually sharing it because she's been nervous to share it. And as is often the way, it's worth examining the question itself and wondering if it's the right question. How did you get over your self-doubt? It assumes that the thing that was holding me back was self-doubt or the thing that's holding this woman back is her self-doubt. And I don't know if that's true. Because the way she asked the question indicated to me that she was actually very clear about her point of view, about how she saw things, her bigger why. And I think she just saw consequences to speaking out and was scared of those consequences. If I say this, then X, Y, Z will happen. And that's probably legitimate. There's probably a good chance there'd be some consequences to speaking out. So this is the, the very difficult math that we all have to do is when to speak out is it worth it and uh, and to wonder am I really clear is this a self-doubt thing or am I just fuzzy because sometimes people are fuzzy and they feel like they doubt themselves but yeah the reason you uh, you know you may imagine you doubt yourself, is that you're really fuzzy. Oh, this is great. There's a shopping cart. Trapped in the ice. And that will probably be there until the spring. Um, but that's how it is. We get frozen in an idea. We get stuck there for a while. People get this thing in their heads like, well, I just doubt myself. And then the whole, you see what I'm saying, the, the algebra becomes about how do I stop doubting myself? Maybe I need to get therapy to stop doubting myself. Tad, how do you stop doubting yourself? But is it self-doubt or is it, again, the hard algebra of consequence? And I think it's often that. So number one, are you clear? at all about your point of view, you know, when you get talking about it. If you're not, get clear, because then that's not a confidence issue, that's a competence issue. The capacity to clearly articulate one's point of view is 100% a confidence thing. And then, if you are <clears throat> clear, and you're not, it's good to, let me just lay out some of the consequences of not articulating your own point of view. And sharing your bigger why. The, cause it's, I think sometimes we also, <laughs> like that shopping cart, we get locked into just seeing one side of it. On the side of it we see are the consequences of speaking out, of saying something. And those are there. I mean, you get canceled on social media. Your colleagues might write you off. Um, you might, share a part of your life story that upsets some people that they don't want you to share. I mean, there's all sorts of reasons not to say things. But here's some of the consequences of, or, you know, there's consequences to saying things. Here's some of the consequences of not speaking up. If you don't share your point of view, your core ideas, the bigger why, you are much more likely, dramatically more likely to attract clients who are not fit at all. And that will drain you. That will drain your business. It will also give you bad word of mouth because 
you'll be working with people for whom your work is not a fit. And what does that mean? It means it's not going to work very well because you can't help everyone with everything. And, uh, you know, let's say I, I really didn't filter at all in my work. Maybe I get people working in mining and selling cigarettes and drug dealers. <laughs> and I wouldn't want to help them. I wouldn't be that excited about it. This happened one time. I was in Calgary doing a workshop with a colleague who brought a bunch of his clients and they were all so mainstream. And a number of them, I just was looking at them thinking, I don't even know if I want to help you. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so your workshop's not going to be good if you don't want to help people. You know, let's say you make products or crafts. You're going to be attracting people who don't appreciate or can't appreciate the, the work involved in making a craft. I keep switching hands because it's so cold. <laughs> um, yeah, who can't appreciate it. And those people will then complain. They'll say you're overcharging. So the consequences of not speaking out are actually immense. So much of the struggle I see in businesses is people un being nervous to claim a, a niche or figure out who they want to work with because, oh my God, I might offend people, I might lose people. Who am I to do that? To turn people away? See what I'm saying? They're stuck in focusing on the consequences of what happens if they do it. And then, well, if I were to share my opinion, oh boy, this would really offend some people. Some colleagues of mine might get upset. That's true, it could happen. And all these fears of what will happen if I speak out kind of run the show. That's most of the troubles I see. Niche, point of view, bigger wide. So what happens is people uh, try to be everything to everybody. And their niche or their marketing becomes so fuzzy, so unclear, so uncompelling, so generic. Everybody says the kind of stuff they say. They just can't, they toe the dominant party line and it's so boring. And the businesses that I see succeed the fastest in a way that's the most enduring are the ones that I've gotten very clear about six things. What they offer, how they offer it, for whom they offer it, where and when they offer it, and of course, why they offer it. And they articulate those things. Those things are clear. Those things are immediately evident in all their marketing. And so, so I'm saying about the why, that sixth piece, well, I'm nervous to share that, or how do you get over the self-doubt? Well, yeah, is it self-doubt? Is that what it is? Or is it that you're not as clear as you think? Or if you are clear, is it not doubting yourself? But uh, morning. Not doubting yourself, but doubting your fellow humans. Doubting your community. Doubting that they'll be able to actually receive what you say in a way that's, um, you know, not going to harm you. Maybe that's more what the doubt is. But you can stay stuck in this thought that you're being held back by your self-doubt for a long time. And you got to wait till the spring of some different circumstance in your life thaws out if you can get that shopping cart out again. People stay stuck. I see this so often. People come to my workshops. They'll say things like, Tad, I don't, uh, I really don't believe in myself. Um, I said, well, how do you know? Well, you know, there's all these things I should be doing in my marketing and I'm not doing them. So obviously I must doubt myself. I must not believe in myself. There must be a lack of confidence. There must be some inner work to do. I said, well, maybe. What are the things that you're not doing? <laughs> they go out, they lay out these sketchy tactics that they learned at some marketing workshop. These pushy, aggressive, and manipulative things. And of course, I have to tell them, as I've said in other places, your unwillingness to do those things is not the sign of a lack of self-belief or uh, 
no sign of uh, self work that's needed, personal growth uh, absent. It's a sign that you have a conscience. Yeah. And maybe the not speaking out at certain times is a sign of a certain kind of savvy that you know what might come. So none of this says anything, of course, about what do you do about it? How do you deal with the, the realities of speaking out? The thing, though, that can help, again, is to not get lost in just the consequences of what happens if I say something. I invite you to sit down, make a list. What are the consequences of not speaking out? I've told you some of them. This is my professional opinion from working with thousands of people around the world. And I've seen the consequences of people speaking out and not. And I can't say what it's like for you because I don't know your community. I don't know your work. I don't know how volatile, you know, they are around the opinions you might have. But don't lose track of the consequences of staying quiet on the clarity you have. Easy to do that and then just turn it into a self-doubt thing. But is it self-doubt? Or is it a... Is it a justifiable fear? Or maybe an unjustified fear? You may not know until you try. Here are the geese. Uh, yeah, they're taking off. Heading south. I don't know if you can see them. Off they go. Whatever you do, do not end up like this shopping cart stuck on the ice of uh, your certainty that your issue is self-doubt. really may not be. Anyways, thanks for watching a longer video than I thought I was going to do on this one today. Um, if you're subscribed to this channel, thank you. If you like this video, it helps more people see it. And also, if you go to mar marketingforhippies.com, there's a gift for you. There's a that my full day long workshop, the video of it is available, plus a bunch of other things that there's a starter kit uh, for those of you who join my email list and you can follow me on social media and uh, Facebook, of course, marketingforhippies.com is my website. Thanks everyone, take care out there.